Today I'd like to tell you the story that has led me on a path that is uh, ever since I come here to Taos, I realized who I am. And I'm going to tell you many stories linked to this story of Jumping Mouse. And uh, I think I'll go sit down now because my legs are giving out. So come as close as you can. I just want to give you a little background on, as to how I came across this story of Jumpy Mouse. I had just come out of uh, uh, an organization, a Buddhist organization that I had practiced in uh, for almost 30 years, and uh, which led me all the way from Denver, Colorado, uh, Colorado boy to uh, San Francisco in the 60s, and then out to New York uh, as a Buddhist. and. Uh, Eventually starting my business as a woodworker. I used to make uh, Buddhist altars. I've made thousands of them and uh, out of the finest wood you can imagine in the world. And my altars are all over the, the, the country here and also out of the country in Japan, certainly, and uh, Cuba. <laughs> in many places that uh, people who became Buddhist and uh, needed an altar, we all needed an altar with which to practice. And, uh, so I began my practice in 69 in San Francisco. Uh, and uh, it led me to realize many things. Uh, one of the most important things that I recognized was the beauty, the diamond within every human being possesses that diamond. And we call it the, their Buddha nature. And, uh, in my lifetime, I've not only found my own Buddha nature, but I see it in everybody now. And uh, it's such a joy, a really true happiness, unshakable happiness, and, uh, which is what becoming a Buddha is all about. And you're not shaken by any goddamn thing. You know, everything's okay. You know, everything is just as it should be. And so I found this story in a book called Seven Arrows. It was written by a Lakota Sioux by the name of Himeo Storm. And uh, he was a Vietnam veteran. And uh, he, when he came back, he decided to start writing about the medicine wheel teachings of the Lakota Sioux. And uh, the medicine wheel is uh, also called the sacred hoop. It's the journey of life itself. There is no beginning, no end. And uh, this story <laughs> starts one day as a little mouse. He hears a sound in his ear. And he pricks his ear up and says, oh, there's that sound again, what is that? Man, it's just driving me nuts. So he turned to his little friend there and he said, Hey, little brother, you hear that sound in your ear? And the little mouse didn't even pick up his head. He said, no, I don't hear nothing. Forget about it. Come on, you're always going off on some tangent. Come on, let's get busy. If the winter's coming, we're going to be in trouble. I saw you for that again. About that day, that sound that he heard. And uh, the next day, he was in the same place again, and he heard it again. But this time, he decided... I'm not going to say anything to anybody. I'm just going to go and see what it's about. You know, I think there must be something up there that will help us in all the gathering of things. So off he went. And sure enough, the sound started getting louder and louder. And he turned around and he saw this raccoon. And the raccoon said, hey, little brother, you're a long ways from home. Are you lost? Where are you going? He says, no, I'm not lost. Uh, I heard this running sound in here. I'm trying to find out what it's about. I know there's something that's going to help us in all our gathering of things. <laughs> I couldn't say. Oh, it's here, little brother. There's the sound of the river. There's great medicine there. Would you like to go? I'll show you. I'll take you. Yeah, please take me. See? So off they went together, and sure enough, the sound of the river started getting louder and louder. And soon it became so deafening that he couldn't hear anything. It was so loud. And he walked up to the edge of the river there and he looked into the water and saw his reflection. 
for the first time, realizing it was a mouse. <laughs> and then all of a sudden he heard a voice, he turned around and he was just scared out of his wits. And he, he turned around, there was a frog over there on a the lily pad and the frog said, hey little brother, leave you alone. Congratulations, you made it to the water in the river. There's great medicine here and I'm the keeper of the medicine. When winter comes, I go away. But when spring returns, life comes back and I come back to guard the secret of medicine of the water. Would you like some medicine? Oh, yeah, well, sure. What do I have to do to get this medicine? Well, don't worry. You just crouch as low as you can. Jump as high as you can. You shall have your medicine. The little mouse said, okay, I can do that. Oh, so I crouched it really low. By the way, I decided to name this little mouse. Uh, I never named him before, but as I thought about it, I think I, I decided I would name him Reuben. <laughs> <laughs> so little Reuben said, oh yeah, I can jump really high. Don't worry, come on. So Reuben stooped as low as he could, and all, all his mind, he jumped as hard as he could, and he jumped really high this time. And as he got to the top of his jump, he looked out and he saw something he'd never seen before. He saw the sacred mountains. This mountain's beautiful, way off in the distance. And he couldn't believe it. But all of a sudden, before he knew it, he was back down in the water, all wet and pissed off because he knew that the frog had played a trick on him. <laughs> the frog said, hey, don't be angry. What did you see? And he thought about it for a minute and he said, yeah. I saw these beautiful mountains way off in the distance. And the frog said, Matt, yeah, that's right, you saw the sacred mountain. You have a new name now. You're no longer Ruby. You are Jumping Mouse. <laughs> so Jumping Mouse, with all his uh, might, he ran back to the village of the mice and he started to tell everybody the story of what he saw. And he was trying to convince everybody, you know, let's go, man, there's something up there that's going to help us. And everybody was looking at him with disbelief. And, oh no, he went off again. And, uh, he's been doing this over and over. He's always talking about some sound that nobody else can hear. We're disgusted with him. Let's chase him out of the village. And so they did. They chased him out of the mouse village. And very sadly, he approached the edge of the prairie there and he looked up in the sky. And he saw these dots, black dots, flying around in circles. And you realize, wow, those are eagles. Man, if I go out there in the desert, they're going to see me and get me. Uh, I gotta go, though. What can I do? Maybe, he said to himself, if I run really fast, they won't see me. Oh, great, that's a good idea. So immediately he starts to run as fast as he can across the prairie. And, wow, oh, he's so afraid that the eagles going to be getting him and eat him up. And, Tear him apart. So he ran even faster and faster. And he spied a choke cherry bush. And all of a sudden he decides to run into the choke cherry bush and catch his breath. And he runs in there and he's breathing really hard, trying to catch his breath. And he hears a voice behind him. And he turns around. There's this big fat mouse sitting on a throne like thing. And looking at him in disbelief. Where the hell did you come from? Are you lost? Where are you going? What are you doing? You crazy going out there with those eagles up there? They're going to get you. And on and on he went about you know, how great he was and how safe it was for him to be in the choke cherry bush there. Don't go out there. Those eagles are going to get you. Yeah, but I saw those sacred mountains. Those sacred mountains don't even exist. They're a figment of your imagination. He said over and over. Don't even think about it going out. He said, no, I'm not himself. I gotta go, no worries. So he went out to the desert again and started to run as fast as he could across the prairie. And he's running and running and he spies this mound of hair. And he runs it around, runs around it a few times and realizes it's a buffalo. And he thinks to himself, wow, what's wrong with the buffalo over here? And he stopped and in front of the head of the buffalo and said, Mr. Buffalo, what? What are you doing here? Why are you lying here like this? Well, I'm sick and I'm dying. The only thing that can help me is the eye of a mouse. What, he 
she says, oh my God, she's such a magnificent creature. I, I can't let him suffer. I must help him, you know. I'll give him one of my eyes. So immediately upon saying that, one of his eyes flies out of its socket <laughs> and goes straight to the buffalo. And the buffalo is made well. And he stands up and he says, I know of your quest for the sacred mountains. You just sort of underneath me. The eagles won't see you. Oh, that's brilliant. Okay, let's go. So off they went to Buffalo with the little mouse running as fast as he can underneath the buffalo. And they run for a really long time. Finally, the buffalo stopped and says, I, this is as far as I can go. If I go up in those hills, I'll surely break my leg. You just stay on this path here and you'll be fine. So immediately he starts to go up the path, going up the foothills, switching back and forth, going higher and higher up the mountain. He comes around the bend and he spies his wolf on a big boulder, asleep. You know? So he goes up very carefully to the wolf, and the wolf is sleeping and snoring, dreaming, you know, in state. Mr. Wolf, Mr. Wolf, wake up. I'm trying to reach the sacred mountains. Can you help me? Oh, yeah, 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 sure. Yeah. Yeah, I can help you. I'm the guide to the sacred mountains. No, no problem. Just, yeah, yeah. And before you know it, the wolf falls back asleep. A jumping mouse says, gosh, what am I going to do? How can I help him? Hey, maybe if I give him my other eye, he'll be OK and take me the rest of the way. So immediately now, immediately now, he, saying that his other eye flies out of his socket and straight to the wolf and the wolf wakes up and he said i know of your quest for the sacred mountains you just hold on to my tail here you'll be fine i'll take you the rest of the way so off they went together with the little mouse holding on to the tail of the wolf and they go up to the very top of the sacred mountains and to the hidden lake called blue lake <coughs> Mahualu, the sacred mountain, Taos Mountain. And the wolf guides the little mouse up to the edge of the lake there, and the little mouse hears a voice of a frog on a lily pad there, and the frog says, hey, congratulations, you made it to the sacred mountains and the beautiful hidden lake, Blue Lake. Would you like some medicine? And the little mouse says, yeah, well, sure, what do I have to do this time? Well, you just grow a crouch as low as you can, jump as high as you can, and you shall have your medicine. If you feel the wind beneath you, put your arms out. Just trust. Okay? Okay, he said, okay. I told you I can't see a bloody thing now. What do I got left to lose anyway? So what the hell? He goes to the edge of the cliff there and he jumps out. A gust of wind comes along and he puts out his arms. And the little mouse starts to fly you know, higher and higher. And that, as soon as that happens, he, his vision comes back and returns. And he's flying over the lake. And the frog yells up at him, you have a new name, Jumpy Mouse. You are Eagle. So that's the story of Jumpy Mouse. It's a story of life's journey, all that we all will have to go through. It's a story about innocence, a story about trust, a story about sacrifice, a story about your seeking mind and your desire to reach that sacred mountain. On average, an eagle will live for 40 years. But once in a while, there's a, another eagle that says, I have to be here longer. So he flies up to a really high place on the mountain and he finds a big stone to land on. And by that time, after 40 years, his beak has totally deteriorated. His talons are virtually run, worn away. He can no longer fly very well or hunt, and let alone even eat his food. So he's on the verge of death. 
But he decided to go to that high place and beat his beak off of his face and beat his talons, scratched them off of his, his uh, legs. And he grows new feathers and a new beak and new talons and will live another 40 years. So this story, my story, and that's what I'm going through right now. I'm fighting my old age, my sickness, and I'm gonna beat it with this up here. And with your help in so many ways, you guys are my inspiration, literally. Thank you for coming today and sharing this time with me. Wash day. Got through that, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations, Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. <laughs>